Oil futures were lower Monday, with prices staying below $60 a barrel. It's a reaction to news that China has increased efforts to boost its economy. China is the world's second largest oil consumer, and this past weekend it cut interest rates for the third time in six months. June crude settled at $59.25 a barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange. On Wall Street, the market ended slightly lower Monday. Stocks gave back some of the gains from Friday's post-jobs report. The Dow Jones finished down 86 points to close at 18.1. The Nasdaq was down 10 points to close at 5. And this is a big week for broadcast television. Monday, the networks rolled out the red carpet for advertisers as they try to pre-sell as much advertising time as they can for the new TV season. The upfronts are a high-stakes game with tens of billions of ad dollars at stake. And it comes at a time when television viewing has plummeted, 9% this season. Broadcasters blame that on non-traditional broadcasting and streaming services like Netflix. Television may be facing a losing battle with the web, where ad spending has grown 18.5% in 2014. And one media report predicts online spending to average 14% growth through 2017. Well, are self-driving cars any safer? Reports show Google's self-driving cars are getting into accidents in test runs conducted in California. Four of approximately 50 self-driving vehicles have been involved in accidents since September. The self-driving technology was supposed to improve safety by taking the human driver error from the roads. And in two of the tests, the cars were driving when the accident took place. In the other two accidents, humans had taken control of the wheel. If the crashes were due to human error, it poses a question for car makers about how much control to offer the human driver in self-driving vehicles. A new public-private partnership will focus on finding a cure for AIDS. GlaxoSmithKline is teaming up with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to start a research center to search for a cure for AIDS. The British pharmaceutical giant and the university made the announcement Monday. Each will own half of the new company, Cura Therapeutics. Glaxo was a leader in developing antiretroviral drugs two decades ago. And that's your Wall Street Report. Thank you for watching. I'm Patrick Sheldon, and this is BEN, where jobs come first.